Giada. What are we yes, making? Yes, you ready? Yes, I am. We are making salmon puttanesca, which is a traditional seafood dish. A lot of times it's made with tuna, but instead of making it with tuna today, we're going to make it with salmon. So fresh salmon that we've cubed. So you have a, a skillet through with some olive oil in it? I do, and it seems like it's a really good temperature right now. And also Kim, Julie, and Precious are incredible VFFs who have joined us for cookbook today. They all made this dish. Uh, ahead of oh, time, good. and they might have some questions to pop in here and there, oh, Giada, if that's okay. Oh, I love it. Yes, 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 yes. Giada, I, I do this. have a question about the fish. Sure. Uh, I'm, I'm severely allergic to like shellfish, and I noticed this recipe was done with salmon, but I wondered if any other proteins would be could be substituted as well. Good question. Oh, great question. Yeah, yeah. You can use chicken if you don't want to use any kind of seafood. Um, it really works with any protein. It's kind of up to you. Do you um, you ready to throw the pasta in? This I is am, a pretty quick. I am ready, ready, Giada. I'm so ready, and I've got my pasta right here. Oh. Did you salt your water? No, and I now know. I also learned, um, you know, how, what a cardinal no-no it is to put <laughs> olive oil in the pasta. No olive oil in the pasta. You're ruining it. So once the um, once you get the, the salmon kind of cooking, yep. you can add the red onion yep. and the garlic. Deanna, I have a question. Sure. If I did not have red onion, could I substitute a shallot or something else? Good question. Absolutely. You can definitely use shallots. You can use a regular brown onion, a white onion, really any of it. It's just to give it a little extra flair. Yeah, it smells really good and it's a really quick dinner. So once you've added the onion and the garlic, you guys ready to add tomatoes? Yep. So I've got um, some cherry tomatoes that I just have. So we're gonna create like this really light sort of, think Amalfi Coast, think oh. um, really light tomato sauce, like from fresh tomatoes. So now the tomatoes are breaking down, hopefully for everybody, are they? Yep, absolutely. They're yeah. looking really, really, really good. Are you ready to add a little bit of wine? We're not gonna add a lot of wine, just a little hint to give it extra flavor. And that's the great thing about these recipes is not that I've taken everything out of it, I've just reduced the amounts a little bit. So you get the enhancement of that flavor from the wine. There we go. It adds a little acidity to the tomatoes, which creates a really well-balanced sauce in the end. So a little bit of white wine. John, I have a question as you're stirring your pasta. I noticed that mm -hmm. you suggested that gluten-free pasta could be used uh, as well, but what about a plant-based pasta like a chickpea pasta? Good question. Sure. If you like chickpea pasta, that'd be great. Lentil pasta is really great. Um, there's um, edamame pastas now that work really well as well. Okay, thank you. You guys ready to add some olives? I just added my olives. But we're also gonna add the parsley, the chopped parsley, Got and it. the oregano. So again, yeah, reinforcing, yeah, sure. So I'm not big on olives. I didn't add that many. So does that compromise the flavor of the dish at all? No, you, you can reduce the olives if you don't like the olives. It's just this <laughs> is a traditional dish that has that flavor component of the rich olives, that salty, rich olive with the light, vibrant flavor of tomato. But you could use capers or use less. Sounds yeah, good. yeah. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to forget about my pasta here. Did you taste your pasta? Almost. Well, I missed my I missed my mouth on that one. Be careful, go hot. Now, Giada, my pasta is ready. Can I add it straight Let's into go. the bowl, or do I want to drain it? Yep. No, I just I take this nifty little pasta scooper, this colander, this like spoon, and I add it right into the pan. The whole idea here is that you save the pasta water real hot, so you don't drain it. You throw the pasta right into the skillet. Oops. Um, so that way it can start to absorb, finish cooking in the sauce and absorb the flavor of the sauce. Oh and we're gonna add a little bit of pasta water. And the I pasta water amount it. depends. Yeah, go ahead. So I wasn't sure of the consistency that the pasta the sauce should be. So how much pasta water should be used? Well, I would say that you can use anywhere from um, a couple tablespoons to a half a cup. So it kind of depends, but you want you want it to be saucy. So I just used two ladlefuls 
So that's going to be, well, I used one ladle full. So that's going to be about a quarter cup. So I might use one more. So up okay. to half a cup. Yeah. I wouldn't use more than a half a cup. You shouldn't need to. And then I finished it with a little bit of Parmesan cheese. Parmigiano. Uh, looks wonderful. Parmigiano. And allow the cheese to slowly get mixed in and just take it easy and just kind of fold it all together. And as you can see, it should smell really good. Does it smell good? It smells so good. It's insane. It's very sweet, you guys. Mwah. This was so fun. Does it taste good? Oh my God, it's so good. Oh my God, it's so good. Mm, it's delicious, you guys. Now, Kim, and mm. Kim, what was um, one of your favorite things about making this dish? That it was quick, it was easy, and it was one pot, just except for, you know, boiling the pasta. The pasta. That's exactly Didn't right. Didn't dirty up a whole lot of dishes. Yeah, that, that's, and that makes a huge difference. Um, Julie, what about you? It was perfect. I work full time. I'm busy. It was perfect for a weeknight meal. It also has such a clean, beautiful, light taste about it. Precious, what was your favorite part? Yeah, I would say the taste, the fresh, the freshness of the dish, because coming out of winter, I was eating so many heavy things that this was just perfect for a spring evening. Um, and I love that it's so fresh and delicious and light. I'm struggling. Yay! <laughs> that makes me happy. Shout out, I can't stop. Hold on. Like, mm, mm -hmm. It's really fabulous. <laughs> um, I'm so happy. That mm -hmm. makes me, that makes my day. I cannot. Thank you enough. You're just so amazing, Giada. I'm so excited and thrilled that we could do cookbook club with you. It is so meaningful. Me too. It's thank really you for picking me. Oh, thank you for doing it. And Kim and Julie and Precious, it is so wonderful to go on this journey with you. And don't forget to get your copy of Giada's new book. It's dropping. It's available right now. Get it while it's hot. And then if you want to make this recipe for the delicious puttanesca at home and you can send it to our website, go to the Drew Barrymore Show .com and don't forget to don't forget to join our cookbook chit chat. Say that five times fast <laughs> on social media using the hashtag Drew's Cookbook Club. What an honor. Oh, thank you, Giada. Thank you so much. Thanks, ladies.